Hey YouTube, Mike that tankless guy here. How are we all doing today? I hope we all had a safe and productive week. All right, today we're going to continue with the NPE model, the um, uh, condensing unit. Last week we did an introduction and kind of an unboxing to show you what the uh, product is and what parts are in there. And today we're going to go over the conversion of it. Now, like I said last week, is Navion's NPE model, whether it's an A2 or an S2, comes from Korea, natural gas. So in the box, it's only natural gas. You, it's not a propane. Like I said also last week, this unit is four units in one. It's a natural gas, propane, indoor, outdoor. And as we go on with the series of this, you'll understand and you'll see more. But when you buy, pick up, purchase, have it delivered, the box, it's gonna be natural gas. Now, with Navion, they give you some extra parts. Down here, next to the PC board, I showed you last week, they give you O-rings, a fuse, they give you um, a plate for the um, uh, flame rod and sensor, they give you um, sandpaper to clean off the flame rod and sensor, then they give you both the propane and high altitude, high altitude natural gas kit. Now, each kit contains an orifice, extra screws, these tiny little screws, which you're gonna see in a minute, extra O-rings, a figure eight, and an oval O-ring, and um, a, a, a sticker to affix to the side that basically is saying you converted it from natural to propane on what date and who did it, okay? But I do one other thing, which I'm going to show you in a minute. All right, <clears throat> converting. First thing I like to do is I like to convert it immediately. As soon as we hang it on the wall. Now, I'm going to say that again. As soon as we hang it on the wall or on the rack. Why? Now, I, I thought of this up. I did not. It does not happen to me. But as we go through the procedures of converting this, you're going to see if you convert it on the table, there's a chance of this tiny screw that holds, there's two screws that hold the orifice in behind the gas tube in the Venturi. That could actually pop out, roll through the orifice hole and into the Venturi. Where if you're doing it this way, on the wall, and you, one of those screws drops, gravity is going to take it either in the chassis or on the floor. And it's not going to get the Venturi. You're not going to have to take this Venturi apart and try to shake the thing out. All right? So, convert the unit the way you see it right here on the wall or on the rack. All right. Let's get this camera moved because uh, I'm going to angle. I'm going to move it this way so you can see better. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, there's six screws. There's two here on the bottom on the gas valve. There's four up here on the Venturi. You're going to take your propane um, bag. Now, if you're above the 2,000 feet, all right, so this is altitude from 5,400 to 10,100. Natural gas high altitude conversion kit. So if you're at that altitude, you'll be using this kit if you're under natural gas. This here is the propane gas high altitude conversion kit. This is from zero to 10,100 feet for propane gas use only. Now, you would have to get a different orifice if you're up higher, okay? So, just bear that in mind. So, you have your kit. 
First thing I like to do is to take this thing apart. Now, I want to show you something. You want to use a very good screwdriver. Something that is either laser cut titanium tip and I like to use the Weha screwdriver. It's like a 11 or 13 in one screwdriver. Um, actually Lowe's sells it or you can get it from um, online, Amazon, uh, you know, whatever. It's a German made tool. But another tool that you would l need to purchase and it's a great tool to have is this Nipex 8201200. I will put all of the model numbers and where you can purchase them in the description below. But the beauty about these pliers is you see the tip? It actually has teeth in the tip. You see how it's grooved up in the top and the bottom? And the reason is that this is an aluminum venturi, an aluminum tube with a, 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 a stainless steel screw or an aluminum screw. They actually, and there's a lock washer behind it, they actually seize in there a little bit. So even some of the best screwdrivers won't remove it. So with this, you can actually get in, grab the screw facing out, pressure and turn, and you just break the seal. These, and I'll show you, when I take the screw out, I'll show you how it fits in there. But again, it'll be all in the description below. And it's, you can actually, it is, it's two, two sizes. You can adjust it. Great, great, great tool. You're going to also want, where is it, a pair of needle nose pliers. You're going to want to have a rag with you to, to just, and I'll show you why I actually use my shirt. All right. First thing I do is I remove the two bottom screws right here. Now, you'll see on the screw and on the um, actual plate, there's a yellow mark. You don't have to get them back in the same. What they do is when they, when they tighten this down, they actually use a marker pen and mark the screw. Let's see, that one hit. This one's got a better, a little bit more of a color on it. You see how they put like a little yellow mark on it? And you see how this, it's got a lock washer? You might as well, since we're showing, you see how it grabs the screw? See that? This thing is great. I use it. I've been using these for quite some time. And it gives a nice amount of torque to just crack the seal and then this, you use the screwdriver to take it out. So I remove the two bottom screws first. Then I go up and remove the four top screws. Now they are, it's a little fiddly to get your fingers in here, but just, if you're inside a house, but if you're outside doing this, like in grass, mulch, dirt, I put a tarp down, a white tarp. Takes about, if you, you take your time, takes about 10 or so minutes to, um, convert this. So, and the reason we use the needle nose pliers, if I can find it, is to grab the screws that are next to, sometimes they come right out. You could get a magnetizer that will magnetize the tip. Now, this thing here, you don't want, you want to make sure you have a good, don't drop it, don't let it fall in the dirt. It's got a nice smooth machine surface. I put it up 
by the vent. L leave it alone. Now, back there is the orifice. Can we see it? Right back there. Nope, you can't see it. There we go. So right there is where the orifice is. So, there's the two tiny little screws, which you do get extra in the bag. You do not get these screws extra. You do not get these screws. But they are an American screw, so you can purchase this at a hardware store. So, I know my hands are going to be in the way. So you take out... See, I get my nail in there to hold it on the screwdriver. I place everything in the chassis. These screws, I've never had a problem removing. It's a brass screw, so I've never had a problem removing these. There we go. They're fiddly. All right, so. Let's take out the orifice and zoom back the camera a minute. All right, so, and the figure eight gasket came, I want to show you. See, the figure eight gasket came with it. So bear in mind that if when it comes with it, it has to go back in. They give you extra. But here is the orifice and the figure eight gasket it's got a large circle and a small circle. Small circle up. You, it, it actually fits in a recess right in and it's, and it's two directional. Then there's another gasket here and then there's another gasket down. See, you got your figure eight, your uh, the oval gasket, and then there's another gasket Let's find this thing. Here it is. There's another gasket right there. That's from the gas valve. Okay, so <clears throat> now the gasket, you're going to look at it and it's going to say, let's find it. So that's the gasket, excuse me, or orifice. See, there's a notch in here, and there's a notch here. You got to mate it. Now, what I do is I take this um, orifice and I put it back. I put it in the high altitude natural gas, and I write on it NG on it. So now you want to take out. You want to take out the propane orifice which is actually in a separate bag so I'll pull the bags out and I'll pull out the this thing I want to come out okay come on and yes all right, so here is the propane orifice. Oh, and I, I actually put the natural gas back in this in a bag and put it inside. Then here is the large O-ring, which is the outer and the figure eight and the two screws. And then here is this unit has been converted to propane. And here is the sticker that you would write in the day, the month, the year, two, <clears throat> propane, the kit number, buy, you put your business name, 
and you could do your address, you could do whatever. And that you would affix. You can affix it to actually this side, because this is the side that's got the serial number, the model number, and what it is. So, <clears throat> my experience is, <clears throat> excuse me, my experience is, is that these O-rings are still in perfect condition. But you want to make sure, you want to take a, a, a nice soft cloth and make sure there's no dust or dirt on this or this. But then you want to make sure that this O-ring stays seated, this figure eight O-ring is in the back, and this O-ring is in here. Then we're going to, wow, this bag opened up beautiful. Usually I got to kind of use my knife. So I would take the natural gas orifice and just put it right back in this bag. And then I would put it in with the um, natural gas high altitude so that you do know. So now you want to check the orifice and on the bottom it's going to be really hard to see but it's etched laser etched it says gas lp and it's got two two hundred five oh five four five a then it gets three point nine slash five point six five which is the orifice size now you see what i mean here by doing that, you might drop that screw through that hole. It's small enough to fit through that hole, and it would end up getting into this Venturi. So that's why I do it where you see it, because if I drop the screw, it, or gravity is only going to bring it down. So now, uh, with the notch facing the left-hand side, get the orifice in. Now, normally, it'll stay in there, just like that. Then you want to take your first screw. Again, they are fiddly, as the English would say. I follow a lot of English carpenters, and, I, and they use that word a lot. That's where I got Bob's your uncle from, and Fanny is your frapping aunt, is the end. Get the first screw in. Do not tighten it. Then get the second little fiddly screw which ended up down in the little recess here <laughs> here we go I use a magnetic tray if sometimes but it's a brass screw and then get your second one and be very feel the thread you don't want to cross thread this all right, now you got that in. Tighten up the two screws. And that's it. Just, just when it's, you feel it stop, just a little bit, that's it. That's all you need. You don't need the, 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 get, the figure eight. Now, the reason, uh, troubleshooting. If you get a whistle sound or a whining sound when it fires. It could be that the figure eight gasket is not seated properly or pinched or no good. You might have to change it. That's on something like an older model, um, you know, one that's been installed. So just snug. That's it. You know, tight and then just a, a little bit and that's it. Now, you want your tube. You want to take a nice rag. I use my shirt. I wipe it off. So you don't know what you're picking up. Now, this is getting the first screw in is the most difficult part. There's actually setting lugs right here, here, and here that set this here and here. So you want to get pants that have pockets on the side so you can put your screwdriver in. You want to get this into the setting lug and you I always catch the top left hand screw first it, like I said take your time there's no, you rush it you cross thread it you're poopy out of luck so now that screw is now caught now you can it ain't falling nowhere now you can manipulate you want to get the top 
screws in only semi tight. Then I get this most pain in the neck one in, which is this bottom right. And then see, I'm moving this around and now I'm in. Then I go for the bottom left and just take your time. I can't stress that. Again, watch it until that the lock washer just pushes up against the plate and that's where you stop. And then this one. Now, you see, it's still loose. Why? Because you got to manipulate this up and down to get that into the gas valve. If you look at it, you'll be like, oh my God, there's a gap there. And I'll show you. Let me zoom in. And I'll show you the gap. Okay, you see? You see there's a little gap here. Don't panic. There's nothing wrong. It, get, it moves. So, just, I squeeze it together. Oop, drop a screw. It's going to take a minute. It is a little bit of a pain. Especially if you're up on a ladder. Like if this thing is up high. So I get the screw in there. And then I just move it around until you feel it actually fall in. And now I'm caught. Again, just tighten it up to right where it's pushed. The lock washer is pushed up against the plate. You still see here? Everybody good? Yep, I'm still recording. I'm a little trouble with the camera. So once you get that in, tighten these down. The two ones on the bottom. Just give it a nice... Like I said, you don't have to go... You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger on this thing. And I, I go in an X pattern. And that's it. There's your conversion. Now, there's one other thing you got to do. I'm going to take the camera off to show you and then fight to get it back on. All right, let me... I did not take the knife out of my pocket. Sorry about that. All right. Right here, you see there's two dip switches. There's the bottom and the top. The top one has to get pushed to the on position just like that. That is now telling the PC board that it's propane gas. Now there's, let me get this back up here. So, once you get that in there, let me get this camera back to the other position here. Now, we're going to go through this <clears throat> when we do the setup feature on the control panel. So, when you get into this control panel, when you plug it in, it's gonna, you're going to have to set the, the date and the time, altitude, um, and then it's going to ask you what type of gas it's gonna come it's gonna highlight natural you're gonna go down to propane you're gonna hit OK then it's going to say has it been converted you hit OK 
So you're basically telling the controller to tell the PC board that it's been converted. So now, <clears throat> when I'm done with the conversion, I affix the two stickers on the side, write everything in, but there's one more thing I do. Now, I know I, when I come up to a unit, I look, I always look and see what, if there's a gas, like a natural gas meter out there, or, or actually when I drive in communities, as I'm going to go service a unit, I see if there's any yellow stanchions. Yellow stanchions out of the ground in the grass or in dirt means it's a marker for natural gas. So I know the community is natural gas, I look at houses, I see if there's meters, so I know if the community is natural. But when I get to the house, I look for the meter, I look for the tank. All right, I look on the side of the unit and I see what it is. I'll, sometimes you might not look and see what the unit is. If it's been converted, what I do is I take a, sh a, 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 a black magic marker, a Milwaukee black magic marker, and right here, right across the heat exchanger, I write L, P, and the date that I converted it. So let's just say today's the 21st. So I would write LP 121-23. So I have the sticker on the side, and I have the um, writing right there. That's all you need to do. And that will now tell a service tech when he comes, if he doesn't look on one of the sides, when he opens up the front cover, it's going to say right in his face what it is. Now, when we have a natural gas unit, I don't write nothing. I just leave it alone because it's what it was from the factory. If, they're, if you're an NSS trained um, uh, Navion uh, service provider, you'll um, know uh, that everything, and, and if you watch the videos, you'll know that these come from uh, the factory. Like, opposed to the NPN model, that you have to buy either natural gas, propane, and then of course they have the U, which is, you know, the one right here on the left. That one is the one that has, is an interior one, and you can put a hood on it for an exterior. Okay, so that's basically the conversion. You have just six screws, the two screws behind it. Again, do it in this position because if anything, it's going to fall by gravity. Put a tarp down on the floor. Um, I, I, I Don't put cardboard paper. Use a tarp because a tarp, you know, once something falls on that, it's kind of almost like a trampoline. It just won't bounce back up. It'll just fall into the tarp. Okay? And that's it. Flip your dip switch, put your markings on, write uh, what you did here on the heat exchanger and the date, put everything back in the bag, put the bags back in, and you're done. That's your conversion. And then, of course, on your setup wizard, you just set up and tell them what it is. All right, YouTube? All right. Um, everything, the, 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 the tools will be in the description below and where you can get them. Um... And again, everything comes with the unit, so I don't have to put anything in saying where you could purchase the conversion. Now, if you need something different, you're going to have to call Navion Tech Support and give them the model and serial number and then tell them what you need if you need something different as far as to convert it. All right? All right, YouTube. Um, my email will be below if you have a question. Um, or if you want information on my training, which actually is going quite well. I did um, four guys this week. So um, if you're interested in it, email me and I'll send you um, the information, how much it'll cost. Um, oh, the tool, <clears throat> the filter removal tool. I will have uh, tools in about six weeks. I got somebody to um, make them. It's going to take about six weeks, and I will have a website that you can purchase the tool off of. So you just buy it, put your info in, pay for it, and it's shipped right to you. Okay? All right, YouTube. Um, again, I'm working on the Patreon channel, um, so that'll be up soon, uh, the link to it. 
And again, thank you for all of your subscribes, your comments, your questions, your likes. Um, that's it. Alrighty. You all have a safe and productive week. And I will see you next week on part three of the NPE condensing model. Take care now. Bye-bye.